Good afternoon. Thank you for the introduction. And I am very delighted to be here to talk about areas that I, in my own private practice, and I do maintain my own practice in consultantship to schools and to families with children who have, and even adults with ADHD, auditory processing disorders and listening uh, problems, it's often very difficult for one to know what it is, how much comorbidity is there, and what are we dealing with? Is it a child who has an ADHD? Is it a child with an auditory processing disorder? Or is it a child who has um, simply you know, some language, receptive language problem? And that's my efforts today to talk to you about. So my first slide is a disclosure. And yes, I am the author of the Auditory Skills Assessment. And I should say I am a co-author because my very dear friend and colleague who passed away recently, Ron Goldman, was the other author on the test. And many of you remember Ron Goldman for his Goldman Fristo test of articulation and the great contributions that he has made to our profession. Um, all I can say is he's one of the finest men I've ever worked with professionally and a dear, dear person and is, uh, is felt and will be felt. For um, now, I have no non-financial relationship to disclose, and this program is being sponsored by Pearson. So the auditory skills assessment, which has been developed, and I will be talking about that in a little bit. But before I get to it, I really want to share some of my clinical experience and knowledge with you. So as you see, I want to talk to you about the differences uh, among ADHD, CAPD, and comprehension of spoken language, because they all can look alike and they can all co-occur. So the learning outcomes for today would be, what are the defining characteristics of ADHD and CAPD and a disorder of spoken language? What are the key deficits that we see in youngsters with ADHD? What are their language and auditory processing problems? And then how can we discriminate uh, between the deficit of, of having a comprehension problem and an auditory processing disorder? Sometimes it's confused. I'll hear a clinician say, well, he doesn't understand what I just read to him, and therefore he has an auditory processing disorder. But I think we have to take a step back and say, well, wait a minute, maybe he really has a receptive language problem when you get into comprehension. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then I will talk about assessment tools to assist in differential diagnosis, and then some recommendations for treatment. Well, where do we go with each? So hopefully we'll have a lot of information packed in today. So let me begin with the ADHD disorder, and what is it? And uh, I'm going to cite the, the latest from uh, the DSM um, description is that attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is characterized by a persistent pattern of inattention and or hyperactivity impulsivity that interferes with functioning or development. Adults with ADHD may be inattentive, may be hyperactive or restless, and may not act impulsively. These symptoms of ADHD occur in two or more settings, such as work, at school, or in social settings. ADHD starts in childhood but can continue into adolescence and adulthood. And in other words, an adult doesn't become ADHD. It stems from childhood. Um, sometimes it's masked or it's seen as a child who's, quote, a busy child or just a, a naughty boy. But uh, there is such a thing as ADHD. We see its prevalence at 9.5% of school-age children in the United States, and that comes from the Center for Control. That's the statements that we have. Um, now, there, the three types are the inattentive, the hyperactive, impulsive, and the third being the combined. And let me delineate for you each. The ADHD inattentive is the youngster who has difficulty sustaining attention. That's the child who can't sit through uh, any lengthy instruction. They don't appear to be listening when they're spoken to. This is the kid who drops his down, um, busies himself. He doesn't follow through on instructions and also fails to finish work. Um, these individuals have trouble organizing tasks and activities. You give them a project, they don't know where to begin with it. 
They are frequently uh, kids who lose things. They go to school. They come home without their notebook, without their pencil. They've lost a jacket in class. Many, many pairs of glasses have to be replaced. Uh, and they are not organized for what they have to do. These are youngsters who are easily distracted by background noise, and they're often forgetful of daily activities. Parents tell me all the time they have to remind the child when they get up in the morning to do the same routine every day. You've got to wash your face, wash your teeth, comb your hair. Same activities, same routines have to be reminded. Now, for the hyperactive child, we have, this is a child who's much more visible, and these are the children who get diagnosed earlier on for very obvious reasons because you see them more readily in the classroom. They're the fidgeters, the ones who fidget with hands or feet. They squirm. They take a, an object on their desk or someone else's desk. They can play with it. I can't tell you how many little wind-up toys I've had that have been broken just from the handling and, and the taking of the toy and exploring it and breaking it. Other, um, many of these youngsters will leave their seat in the classroom uh, or can't sit still through a, a lesson. They have to get up. They need breaks. Uh, these are youngsters who run or climb excessively, uh, which is not always appropriate. They're running around. Um, they have difficulty playing or engaging in leisure activities quietly. These kids tend to be more noisy. You can hear them from the hallway away. Uh, and they don't know what to do with themselves in leisure time. You know, what do I do? What do I do? Very hard for them. Although I have to say that, you know, parents will say to me, oh, you know, but my kid could sit in front of a video for hours. Yeah, they all can. It's, that's not a defining or characteristic that negates a diagnosis. I mean, many of these kids can sit with their, their iPhones, with their, their iPads, and be engaged. Uh, and still can have uh, ADHD. And, and these are kids who talk incessantly. They go round and round, uh, and they appear to be as if they're on the go. And then part of the impulsivity of the, of the hyperactive impulsive type, these are kids who blurt out their answers. They raise their hands after the teacher asks them. Right away their hand goes up, but you ask them for the answer, they don't have it. It's just that an impulsive response. They have trouble waiting turns. Um, these are often, they're often intruding or interruptive. Um, I always say sometimes my first test is when I call the parent at home and I hear the parent on the phone and on the other end saying, shh, I'm on the phone. And then you hear the kid screaming, you know, ah, ma. So these are kids who can't wait or, or hold back. Now, on the third type, which is the combined, you have symptoms of both inattention and hyperactivity. So these are youngsters who don't follow through on instructions. They fail to finish schoolwork or chores or duties in the workplace. They can start a task, but they quickly lose focus, and they can easily get sidetracked. They have difficulty organizing tasks and activities. Like They, they have trouble managing sequential tasks, that is, um, keeping materials and belongings in order. They're very messy. They tend to be messy. They're disorganized and 